listening to rockslamradio.com. From all studios to the world, we bring you the finest in quality entertainment. So grab a groupie, throw some horns, and settle in for another fine show from rockslamradio.com. Ah. All right, this is the David J. Rocks, the J. Radio Show on Rock Slam Radio. Uh, it's part of Entertainment Global Media, and we, of course, we in our studio, we have uh, our uh, CEO there, Nolan Ray, and uh, the marvelous Lauren Mitchell Band from Sarasota is our, our special guest this evening here on the David J. Show. Uh, without further ado, now, I want to give you a taste of their sound. Uh, just to get into that, before I do a little bit of the David J. Rock, the news, uh, with that Pete Townsend article from Rolling Stone on the 28th. So let's get off my side of the bed with Lauren Mitchell Band. Two, three, four. <laughs> Get off my side of the bed No promise for this late It's after three at night You said you'd be home by eight Off my side of the bed This journey of pushing me too far You need to go smooth out in your car Get off my side of the bed Get off my side of the bed you tell me your tired flat Don't even bother lying to me If you can't do better than that Get off my side of the bed Don't believe the words you say I don't know why I let you treat me this way hey, hey. Get off my side of the bed Oh, yeah. <laughs> Get off my side of the bed You're trying to get all frisky You smell like perfume I don't wear Brief of smoke and whiskey Off my side of the bed oh. Let me try to explain It's gonna take more than roses and champagne hey, hey. Get off my side of the bed Get off my side of the bed I know you heard what I said Don't make me put a pillow over your head Go on, get off my side of the bed Hey! All right, the Lauren Mitchell Band, Blues Band We cross all lines here, Rock Slam Radio, man and we dig it all here yeah, out of Sarasota. Had some good, good vibes here and starting off our show. I want to get a little bit of a catch here. Uh, I want to go back. I get, was off, getting off of my side of the bed here in the bed scene uh, with Pete Townsend's <laughs> new memoir, Who I Am. It's from the Rolling Stone 28th, September 28th. That was with Adele on the cover. Uh, it, said, it was a tracing uh, life uh, of... Uh, the Who from formation in 1962 through Woodstock seven years later. Uh, Pete Townsend, he's got some really interesting ideas here. It says, uh, Mick was the only man I ever seriously wanted to fuck. 
And I tell you, I, I usually don't, I don't usually don't bring that language in, but it was off the side of the bed. But that's a, that's the quote from Pete Townsend now, you know. And, and that goes back. That he had some problems there in 1967 uh, at the Monterey Pop Festival. Uh, Jimi Hendrix and Pete Townsend uh, they couldn't agree on uh, what act to, to close the show. So what they did, they flipped the coin, and Jimi Hendrix got it. And of course, uh, Pete Townsend would say, "Could you send me one of those pieces of the broken guitar that you burned up and crashed on?" And then Jimi said, "Do you want me to autograph it too?" I mean, there was a lot of stuff going back and forth with uh, <laughs> Pete Townsend and Jimi Hendrix in those days. Then also, Pete says, um, uh, he, "This this is a little bit grosser, but I wanted to use this as a little catch here. Uh, this is I'm wondering if he's used. I don't know if this is true." Uh, I tell you, but it's a quote from the magazine, I, Truth or Publicity Seeking. Uh, Pete Townsend says, I remember Mick Jagger's penis being huge and extremely tasty. So, again, let's get off my side of the bed, and we want to get over that kind of uh, language. And hopefully it's promotional seeking, I'll tell you what, because I don't know. But it, anyway, it's in Rolling Stone, the September 28th edition. If you all get a chance there with Adele, no, Adele being... A lady who uh, just, I mean, she's only been around a few years now, and that's, again, she's uh, number six on the 50 greatest women albums of all time, according to Rolling Stone, number six with 21. So, again, Adele has done some tri- major, they call it the uh, triumph of Adele, and it's it's a big catch on the latest September 28th edition there, plus the Pete uh, Pete, Sound, uh, Pete Townsend uh segment uh, that gets a little bit graphic there, but, uh, you know, that's kind of the way it is. We're crossing boundaries here in all different ways, and, you know, this is America. We've got a lot of freedom of speech in here, and and we're really pleased with it. Now, we want to get back to the Lauren Mitchell Band, and we want to introduce the uh, the members here of the band. I'm going to let Lauren Mitchell uh, do that. There's Lauren right here. And, uh, Hello. Yeah, she knows all her band members. And go ahead and tell about your background and what I got do. you started. All right. Uh, well, I do know all of my band members. Uh, to my left here is Mr. Bob Dealman on the guitar. To his left is Mr. Kevin Voigt on the bass. Yes, otherwise known as my brother, but not really. <laughs> Over in the corner, the man behind the curtain that I don't think any of y'all can see, uh, those of you who are watching on the Internet, our real good friend, Mr. David Lee Maxwell, hanging out with us on the drums, and we are very, very pleased to have him with us this evening. Thank you, David. We appreciate it. And over here in the corner on my right is Mr. Michael Hensley, otherwise known as the professor on the uh, portable Hammond B3 this evening. <laughs> we didn't think the real one would fit in the studio. So, what else is it that you want well, to know, man? Anybody want, want to share some experience? With what, what got you got into music, man? You know, what got you into the vibes, and what, why did you choose blues? You know, why did you do the, Why do you do the things you do in music? Anybody want to volunteer? If you oh, want man. to volunteer, just jump right on in there, mix it up. You don't, say, you don't that's choose, a loaded question. You don't choose blues. It, you don't it choose, choose. It picks you. I Ooh, agree. Man. I agree. It chooses you, man. You that's, that's very true, Bob. I agree. Anybody else? Any other thoughts, gentlemen? No. Uh, all right, again, that's I know a, the blues chose you. I, you know, <laughs> and, and you got original music. How'd you come up with this song in that, you know? Um, well, the one that we just played, Get Off My Side of the Bed, was written over here uh, by Mr. Bob Dealman. Um, and I, I guess that's a good question, Bob. How did you write that song? I, I wrote it specifically for Lauren. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you know, th- there's a lot of different kinds of blues songs. And I thought it would be cool to have something kind of, kind of up and sassy. Cool. Just like me. Because I right. just... I, I, I just, <laughs> just like Pete Townsend, man. He's this, doing some wild stuff. Not that sassy. Yeah, um, no. I mean, that is some no, sassy. No, stuff. no, no. no. The, the one I wrote before was kind of a down, slow blues song. So this was something... And it just fell in place real quickly. This one I had to work on a little bit to, to make it come together. But it, it was like for something different and, and something sassy. <laughs> sassy. I'll go with that. <laughs> okay, we can dig that, you know. That sassy that pays the bills there you know, and gets everything spicy and sassy and ready to go. And that was a great sound here, a great blue sound. Thank you. Now, uh, I want to get back to uh, some of the uh, Stones. you got 50th anniversary. That on, uh, they're bringing out a vintage clips from her Crossfire Hurricane trailer. A Crossfire Hurricane trailer, a new retrospective documentary. Uh, about the teenage origins to stadium glory and beyond. Features early television clips to massive arena shows and candid shots of the band's more private moments. Crossfire Hurricane debuts October 18th uh, from, in the London Film Festival. It's going to be satellited through 250 uh, cinemas across Europe. HBO is going to pick it up. And it's going to air it on November 15th. Again, that's 
Crossfire Hurricane, a new retrospective documentary, documentary of the Rolling Stones for you Stones folk out there. And again, you got the blues vibe. You got Stones are really into rock. Yeah, you got that rock bluesy. You know, get into that folk. You know, they, they kind of cross all the boundaries, and I, I, that's so important. You know, it's like being in St. Petersburg and not being all closed up like that, or over the Green Guardian. You know, so open it up, man, and let, let let the vibes come through. Let everybody enjoy themselves. Now, Rolling Stones actually were big fans of uh, Muddy Waters. I think that that was. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's that's where they got a lot of their stuff. I uh, if 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 my education, my blues education, will serve me correctly, I believe that they actually did a tour with him at one point, where he opened for them. I think I read something about that. They were in last all the night. Blues guys. Brian yeah. Jones, the big Elmore James fan. Yeah. So there you go. The Rolling Stones, man, they get their roots from the stuff that we're playing today, where we mm-hmm. all got it from, you know, Muddy Waters and Elmore James and Otis Rush and all that good stuff, man. All right, what you got up? You got another tune for us next there, Lauren? Well, you had mentioned a slow blues that you wrote. Why don't we go ahead and do that one, I think. Let's do that one. This one's called Quitting You. Two, three, four. I let you drive my Cadillac. You run into a tree. You never even apologize to me You live in my house And you don't help with rent And when you take me out uh, It's my money we spend Oh, one day, one day Oh, I'm quitting being your fool You can't get a job But I don't think you're trying Said you were out all day looking I know you're lying Well, I'm working all day you're here alone I can't help but wonder Why you don't answer the phone Oh, one day, one day Oh, I'm quitting being your fool Try to love you, but my heart is filled with doubt. There's a darkness in your soul I can do without. Thinking about the future, it just feels dead. And tonight, hey, smell another woman. Yeah, 
special Lauren Mitchell Band of Sarasota here, Lauren. Uh, now, Lauren, uh, you've got an album coming out, right? We do, you, you, yes. You want to you you plug that a little bit? I love Absolutely. the independent <laughs> artist. Man. Yeah, all right. <laughs> love to talk about this record. Uh, well, uh, we started work on this. Oh, my gosh. I can't even think. This project has actually been in the works for me for... Uh, going on about seven years now um and uh um it's finally come to fruition i'm really excited about it and uh the record's going to be released um we're shooting for december 1st um it's going to be out before christmas that's for sure so everybody can buy lauren mitchell band cds and send them to all your friends and family for christmas this year or hanukkah or whatever uh winter holiday you celebrate make sure we're uh, being pc there and including everybody but um, yeah, oh, the we're, oneness we're, out there, yeah, the great spirituality. Yeah, man, All everybody's right. out there. Yeah, everybody's yeah, out yeah. there. But uh, um, but um, but you're gonna love that music. Yeah, though. We're, yeah. Real, we're real excited about it. All the tracks, that, all the stuff that we're gonna play here tonight, um, is gonna go on that record. And uh, we've been recording it um over the last uh oh I don't know what probably about three months since since the beginning of August. Um, at the Spirit Ranch Studios. Big shout out to Bud Snyder, our producer there. Um, we're real happy to be working with him and. Uh, yeah, should be ready to go here, hopefully by the 1st of December. December 1st, perfect mm -hmm. time, too. You know, that got everything time. How, how many songs on us? 12? Is it what, what do you have? Oh, no, there's going to be, uh, it, it, did we end up with eight tracks, I think? We've got eight on there total. I'm pretty sure. I think there's going to be eight on there. It's our first release. So, and you got you your know. cover, everything designed out and everything? Yeah, uh, yeah, that's being worked on right now. And, what, do you wanna, uh, what are you going to charge for it now? What are we going to charge for Yeah, it? you oh, got to make some of that jig, man. <laughs> All right. Right by man. Know. You got great guitar, I guess man. We'll, I guess we'll have to see what, what everybody's man. willing to give us. But I think it's, I don't know, man. Like I said, I put about 17, or not 17, uh, I put about seven years of uh blood no, and uh man. sweat into this so um i know uh it's gonna be worth at least 10 or 15 dollars all right yeah, right, yeah, right exactly. yeah, you know it, man <laughs> hey it's not easy oh. out there in the music world everybody thinks about it you know there's a lot of good players a lot of good talent i'm just so happy we found a lauren mitchell band here right now, thank you we're happy to be here i mean i tell you it's marvelous marvelous set marvelous song setting getting to know you folks now and listening to some of the highly experienced musicians here you know bob has got a great blues guitar and um uh, I have to admit, there, Mike Hensley over that keyboard is awesome. I like these two. I, I notice how you're balancing each other off, and then you've got the beat, you got the the rhythm back there that's enhancing it. So again, I like the way you're playing it and balancing off your tune. And of course, Lauren with her uh, striking vocals are, are really it's really just piercing the whole atmosphere. Well, here. thank you. Yes. We're real, like I said, we're real happy to be here. Um, I've been working with uh, all these guys on and off for a real long time. Just um, I guess a quick uh, short story about how the band happened was. Uh, um, I met Kevin, my bass player. That's why I call him my brother. Uh, probably close to about 10 years ago. I've known him longer than I've known uh, the rest of these guys. Uh, we played in uh, a band together off and on for a couple of years and stayed in touch and remained friends and uh, always uh, really enjoyed his playing. And uh, so when the uh, opportunity arose, I made sure that uh, he was the phone call that we made when we knew that this thing was going to take off and we were going to be working on a permanent basis. Um, after him, I probably uh, met Bob Dealman next, again, in another band that we played together. And um, when that thing kind of fell by the wayside we stayed in touch and bob introduced me to mr hensley over there in the corner and uh we tried to get something together it didn't quite fly <laughs> we all kind of went our separate ways and bob went and played with some other guys and mike and i sat for probably about the next five years and played in the living room uh unbeknownst to <laughs> nobody man just hung out in the living room over at his house with the piano and worked on a lot of this stuff that uh, you're hearing today other than the stuff of course that bob wrote uh for us and um just recently we've unfortunately had to um make a, a personnel change with our drummer um it's kind of a, a tough thing but uh, our friend david lee maxwell actually who we met um via the internet and actually i believe that mike met well i met you via the internet mike and you played together a long time ago and uh i know that we've got some blues royalty in the building i gotta give this man a shout out because he actually used to play with uh the famous miss diamond tooth mary back yeah. in the day when she was still around so yeah so 
man. We knew that Jasmine David. Tuesday. Yeah, we knew that David was going to be good to oh, fill yeah. in for us, you know, until we could get things going on. So, and we're all happy to have him here. And that's the story. That's how. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it, man. So, so <laughs> this mix came together. You the seven years. You said seven. Well, years Well, like I said, I met Kevin about ten years ago, and I met Bob probably about uh, seven years ago, and mm-hmm. and uh, I've been trying to work on getting a project um, of my own up and running for probably about six or seven years. And uh, all that time, like I said, we were sitting playing piano in the living room and trying to get this material together. And uh, actually, this the, the reason that I'm here is um, literally, I got I to gotta put it out there, uh, a blessing in disguise. Um, I didn't know that I was given when I was let go from a job that I had and uh, realized that I finally had all the time on my hands, time in the world on my hands to uh, put this thing together. And the next thing I know, a year, a little over a year later, uh, here we are on your show, Damn getting it. ready to put out our first album. No, and Happy to be playing music full time, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> it's a beautiful thing. I don't work for anybody else other than my music and myself. I, I know. I check your website, man. You are booked to the hilt, man. Almost <laughs> every night, nice, man. Yeah. You know what I mean, that website is really heavy. It is loaded up. It doesn't come easy, folks. Let me tell you, this band's really got it going there and got some great musicians here. What was the title of that last song there? Uh, uh, the last song we just did was called Quitting You, and that was another Bob Dealman uh, composition. Quitting You. Okay. Yeah, Quitting there, You. There's an item. No, item. I, just, I just thought I'd clue in on Quitting You. Uh, from the Rolling Stones, this is David J. Rocks to J. News. <laughs> it's about Jack White now. Abruptly ends his Radio City show after 50 minutes. You know, Jack White, man. He, he just st- stopped the show. That's Radio City Music Hall. What was wrong, man? Well, we're going to go into that. I'm, I'm getting to it. Uh, you got to yeah, tell yeah. me. I want to know. 12, 12 song sets backed by all male band. Uh, a crowd was visibly enthusiastic. White uh, was displeased with the energy level. Uh, and he actually. Oh, hey. Yeah, man. the energy level. <laughs> See, he, this, guy, this guy, he taunts the, the audience, you know, and tries yeah. to get them stoked. He might yeah. say something negative and try to get them wild. Uh, and Maybe then we he, should start doing that. What do you know? You know think? what I mean? Friday. You know, Friday. Yeah. yeah. And it said, he said, Jesus Christ, Ooh. is this an NPR convention? <laughs> That's what he stated to the crowd. And uh, so it says, white eggs on crowd with a sarcastic banter, then joke performing rest of the show uh, that he would do it acoustically instead of electronically. And, and, and he says, well, only 10% of the people would like it acoustically. The crowd's so saying, fuck Jack White, and started booing. He walked off, man. He just walked off. A security stated uh, he wasn't happy with the sound, so I guess the security guys were covering for him. There were a number of angry exchanges. Uh, uh, there was a shirtless fan in front uh, on the front row that Jack There's always White, a shirtless fan. You know, I, I don't know if that was There's a man always. or a woman. I, I I don't know. I was gonna say, uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. You know, I Let's mean, take a poll. Let's take a poll. I know these guys played, been around, and played with a lot of a lot a lot of people back in the day, man. I bet if that was if that fan was shirtless, what do you think? I think it was probably a woman. Yeah, well, if that was Freebird, if that was Leonard Skinner, I'd say it would be. A, I'd definitely say it would be a woman. I don't know, but Shame they, on us. Uh, they, they were taunting each other and exchanging. Eventually, uh, security had to remove that fan. Uh, and then after White went off and the fans started leaving and they were booing and hissing and calling him names and everything, a hundred fans stayed outside of Radio City Music Hall and started banging on cars. So there was like a near Wyatt, like the. Uh, show of the doors that the doors did in uh, New Haven. Uh, again, Jack White really uh, instigates that. He's kind of got that uh, Jim Morrison uh, edge to him uh, besides the, the beautiful, you know, he's a marvelous guitar player with his uh, songwriting. But, you know, I mean, I love Jack White, man, and, and it, it amazes me. Uh, I, I never thought that, you know, he would actually taunt his audience like that. What do you think about that? You ever taunt your audience in that, you know, get, get, call them names in that, get them stuff riled up? I've never called anybody a name. No, I can't think that. I don't know. I can't think that I have ever. Yeah, I try try to be a little more encouraging as opposed to uh, taunting. Um, You know, we like to keep things on the up and up here, but... uh, you know, I, I I can't lie. I've I've, I've played some rooms that uh, you know after hearing that comment, I think we could probably all agree there have been a couple of rooms that we played that we thought it looked more like an NPR convention. Yeah, yeah, I could I could go with that. Maybe I might have to steal that one for next time, Kevin. That's going to be your job from here on out. You're going to have to taunt the audience. Okay? Yeah, you assign one of the players to start taunting, calling names and that, and pointing somebody out in the audience. I, I say that I say that I I tease Kevin about that because he's our quiet one for sure. So yeah. <laughs> he would he, none of these guys actually would ever do anything like you that. You know, I tend to agree with you there, but you know, I, I find that an interesting strategy in some of the venues because hey, man. some of the sound really sucks out there, man. Those sound guys are really bad. They don't even <laughs> get it together. I know I do some walk. I mean, you know, you just kind of survive it and that tweak 
get around. Even if a string goes off a key, it doesn't matter because, again, it sounds so bad anyway, you're trying to mix it together. So, you know, whatever you do, you make it happen. You, you make, make it happen. You make it work no matter, matter what. You, you and, make and that, it work. And that's what it takes moving in, uh, uh, you know, through the years of experience, making it work in life. And that, that, that to me, is exciting. You know, Yeah, there's I nothing. Like. I'll agree. There's nothing like a live performance. I know probably all these guys would agree with me that, um, you know, even if it is a – an it, it, even if the room does appear to be an NPR convention, <laughs> it's always good, man. We always have a good time together up on the stage. I always enjoy playing with all of these guys. It's you know, I, I tend to encourage the, uh, the audience as well on that. Um, you know, stoke them up. And I noticed over at the Boba International Boba House on Friday night, and that, and I know it's a little college place around USF. You know, a lot of people don't know it's behind the University Square Mall. But let me tell you, you get some talent comes through there. You get some of the college mm -hmm. music uh, students and that, and they really are hot up there. And you know, as everybody is so positive, and and it's just an amazing experience on a small venue where people are trying to be positive. But I tell you, I've been in there a couple times, and, and the audience was dead as anything. I did start taunting them <laughs> uh, because I was. I was was up there rock. I, I know one night it was about three, five, four Fridays ago. Man, this audience, I, they must, I, I don't know, maybe they didn't understand English or something. I mean, it's an international. You wonder house. sometimes. You know you what? Wonder. I'm done. You there's do a wonder. lot of, there's all you. kinds of folks in here. You know, it's like the place I've just moved to. You know, you got South Americans, you got uh, Muslims, you got, you got people that speak all kinds of different languages, you know, and it's just amazing to me. You know, I started tuning into it like as a pool today. They were just, going off and off and off on some kind of South American slant and that, you know, and uh, I didn't know what it was, but I, I found out they were drinking beer and having a good time in the water because they started man, bringing their out. beer out. And I said, well, I, well, now I know what's going on because they were, well, I thought they were Haitian doing some kind of, you know, you know what, voodoo though, man, stuff it, it, or something. It, it, you know? it, it, it really doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter because you know what? <laughs> it, it, music is music in any language, you know, and it doesn't matter what it is that, uh, that, you know, you're putting out there, whether it's English or Latin or Spanish or French or, you know, German or, or Arabic or any any language. Nope. Music is music, you know, and that's the beautiful thing about it is that we can uh, play our music and speak to anybody's soul. That's right. American sound system. And that's what's so nice at International House of Boba. You know, you get so many people over there, different mixes, different backgrounds, and people come together eventually. But, that's you know, the beautiful thing about music, I mean, man. That's, I can relate with Jack White. It's one of those things. You know, you have an audience up there, and, and I tell you what, you, I, you'd really like to give it back to them. But I, I've got some people, like in marketing, Oh, no, you can't do that. But I, by the same token, man, we're up there. We're dealing with it, and we like it. You know, if that's what makes it happen, it makes it happen, you know? All right, without much further ado, and, and this is going to be on a positive note, Lauren, I know you've got another song in, in your book, man. We love hearing those blues, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. What do you got? That's what cool. do you got for us? I think maybe now we should uh, um, look over here to my right and uh, we should do a uh, Mike Hensley composition here. I think this one's called It's Raining. What do you say, Professor? Let's get it. One, two, two, three, two, three, four, two, three. Oh, it's raining. In my heart So The tears Will start Raining 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 Ever since we been apart Oh, it's a rain day It's pouring down And I think I'm gonna drown Oh, it's a rain day
Since the day you left me, these clouds come rolling in, yeah. and I pray for the day, boy, that I'll see the sun again. Yeah. Since the day you left me, I cry every night, and I pray. Soda, yeah. Thank you, thank you. Now, is this one of the songs on your new album? It is one of the songs on our new album, yes. And that one was written by uh, the professor over there, Mr. Michael Hensley. Awesome, man. Yes. Yeah, I tell thank you, you what, that is so piercing and that is vocal, you know, the whole guitar. Guitar was backed up, but I tell you, the, uh, the keyboard there was uh, really intense on that one. And thank you wrote that song. Yes, I did. Thank you. How'd you, how'd you come up with that the idea on that? You just kind of. <laughs> just kind of. Uh, just had an idea about the song, just kind of like a uh, scenario, new- kind of, and I just kind of pulled the pieces together and uh, noodle around a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. Like the uh, lyrics just kind of came and uh, just kind of added awesome. the music to it. So, yeah. so you're, you're pretty much the, the, a composer as well. Uh, uh, I, I'm more I mean, of a performer, I think. Than you like the that better? Yeah. But, uh, I can really dig that. I, yeah. I understand it because that. And that's the thing about live, man. It's so exciting. You never, it's on the edge. You don't know what's going to happen. You don't yeah, know how the audience is going to respond. You don't know where the music goes. Even if, yeah. it, you know, everybody Correct. makes mistakes. You try to cover it. Sometimes they come out even better. You come up that's with another. Correct. This is true. Exactly. This is that true. Is yeah. So, you know, yeah. who knows? Sometimes the mistakes it, It's recording. Really it cool, bores right? me over and over again. You know, that's, it's real, that's real you know interesting I mean? because uh, up, up until just uh, a couple of days ago, um, I don't know, what was it, like Wednesday or Tuesday, we were out at the studio um, finishing up just a few things, uh, some small stuff on the on the record and uh up until then i had kind of um I, i'm definitely a live performer i know all these guys are too but uh i kind of gotten i was kind of over the whole recording process you know it's so tedious and you're listening to these same oh, yeah, eight yeah. songs over and over and over again your ears just get fatigued listening to that same stuff you're listening to little teeny tiny you know like one note two notes you know these same patterns over and over again and uh, I thought, man, I don't really ever want to hear these songs again. <laughs> and then uh, and then I have to admit, um, like I said, uh, shout out to our producer, Bud Snyder, at the uh, Spirit Ranch Studios. Man, they have treated us real well. Uh, Bud played us uh, some of the uh, final mixes that he had done on a couple of the songs. So that last one uh, that we did, It's Raining, was one of the ones that he played for me this past week. And uh, I got to tell you, I thought, man, I can't wait to make another record. We sound yeah. real good on yeah. there. <laughs> 
I mean, everything <laughs> sounded so good. It's coming through very well. No one's got a nice mix in there. Well, All right, callers you. out there. Anybody wants to call, do some Q&A, ask us some questions. I love answering questions. I know Lauren and the band, all the band members want to answer questions. We're here for Q&A, baby, 727-597-4022. That's 727-597-4022. Callers out there, come on, call in there, and we're going to answer some. We love kicking it around here. Yeah, that away, baby. All right. Now, again, in the backyard, I want to go back over that Bob Dylan. You know, we had Larry Loveman over at Cafe Hey there Thursday night, and Larry, he's a devotee of, of the Dylan uh, movement. He kind of sings that way. We had me and Larry on, and Larry and his group on, Gia and so forth on there. And so, again, uh, Bob Dylan's striking back the critics' uh, adverse plagiarism charges for, uh, again, and he's, he's actually addressing it uh, now. He, Bob, again, back in the early days, uh, he, he did make a political speech in that he knew that was a big area, a big mistake, and he stayed out of politics pretty good. But he doesn't like to get kicked around about it, and it's been, he's been kicked around ever since he went electric. They called him the Judas. Uh, and, yeah, that's one of the most uh, hatred names uh, in all uh, the Western culture, uh, being called uh, Judas. And so, uh, you know, he, he, he kind, of, kind of hurt him because he's a very sensitive fellow. And, and so uh, he's, he's citing sources uh, such as Japanese author Shuni Saga's uh, Confessions of a Yakuza and Civil War Poetry of Henry Timrod. Uh, now, again, we don't know too much about these two, but we knew Don Bob Dylan. We know Bob Dylan as a great icon for 50 years now, and he has uh, put those uh, authors, those people together in a way that works for large audiences. And that, so he, he, as a songwriter, he feels he's got the flexibility and lassitude to write the song as he feels it, and if he doesn't choose to cite, he doesn't choose to cite because again, he's the one that's putting the mix together that everybody's relating with. But Bob again, Dylan's a great songwriter, you, man. Bob Dylan's, and that and that's a beautiful thing, man, to to uh, have a gift, you know, to write a song like that. I got to tell you, that's that's Bob Dylan's one of the greatest songwriters I think ever lived, man, or still best, living. Best Tempest, he's got the latest yeah, best of our generation. So. What's going on yeah, over there got, in that other room? Phone, What's we got a caller in. We got a caller. Call her well, in. Unfortunately, uh, my my monitor isn't working in front of you today, so uh, you guys got a caller. So we do the old school way. Here's a okay. Call. Hello. Hello? Hello. Yeah. Hello. Yes. Hey, Lawrence, Dad. How you doing? <laughs> Hi, Dad. I'm good. How are you? <laughs> I'm fine. Hey, listen. I, I'm glad you plugged Muddy Waters, but please don't forget Keb Mo, Helen Wilf, Little Jackson, Bessie Smith, and all the old timers that. I caused you to listen to. Oh, uh, Dad, thank you, you sound, so much. You sound, That's so true, man. That's you sound my dad. Good, sweetheart. Oh, Daddy, thank you so much. I love you. I really appreciate it. You are correct. This, this is, this is where uh, I got my musical taste from, man. My dad had me uh, growing up listening to all that good stuff uh, from the time as far back as I can remember. Took me to my first blues festival to go see BB King, where we wow. sat out in the sun and oh, yeah. sweated our butts off. <laughs> But uh, it was a great thing. Dad, thank you so much for calling. Yeah, I love you, sweetheart. I love you, too. <laughs> Is he a musician, too? Bye. Bye. Um, Dad, Dad plays a little bit of guitar, but uh, was I don't think he ever really considered himself like a professional musician. But he used to hang out, you know, and play a little bit around the house and that sort of thing. But he, man, I've got a collection. I've got a stack, you know, I mean, a foot high of uh, records that he gave me. All this old stuff, man. I got Jelly Roll Morton. I got Bessie Smith. I got um, the 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 Hot Chocolates is another group. I mean, I, the, just off the top of my head, you know, all kinds of stuff. I know that's some good stuff, man. Some of this real, you know, some of the real early blues, you know. Um, um, where this stuff that we're playing, uh, you know, came from. And like I said, my dad uh, definitely gave me an education as far as that was concerned. So, so that uh, was so. the collecting of the music that he wanted to listen to that you related with. Yeah, so yeah. So pretty much the collection of music that got you started. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've been See listening there? to this stuff since yeah. bef- as, as far back as I can remember, you know. It's, and so I feel like it's just always kind of been in my ears. Um, I went another way and, you know, did some uh, theater and uh, some classical work for uh, quite some time while I was in school and um, mm-hmm. that sort of thing. But, man, I got to tell you, my heart's always been in the blues. It's like what Bob said when we first got here. The blues finds you. You don't find it. The cool, blues finds cool. you, man. There you go, man. <laughs> for sure. I don't have another option. This is what I got to do. And parents so. out there, that's what happens. You know, what you do, how yes. you model for the kids. You Amen. Know? That's what gets it started Amen. There. And my mother, you know what? My mother, too, She was a, she's a music lover. She's not so much for the blues and stuff like that. But you know what? I know that, I know that my mom's a music lover. And uh, she took me to all those voice lessons and, wow. you know, all those practices and stuff like that. Like that, you know, they both did. They ran me around all over the place, making sure that I had my dose of uh, 
what it was that uh, that I wanted. So you know, good God, 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 blues God, 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 God bless our parents, man, and our grandparents too. You know, yeah. all those folks because that's uh, you, know it. you you put music in your children's ears, and I guarantee you they're gonna um, grow up to be uh, well-rounded individuals, and uh, you know. Hopefully happier people, man, listening to music. <laughs> it yeah, makes yeah. everybody happy. You know, <laughs> you, know, you, know? you know, I can remember my dad, you know, um, he was like the next <laughs> thing to God on earth to me and that, you know, uh, great American hero, uh, lawyer, and a, and a World War II vet, uh, mm. highly decorated. Nice. Uh, combat officer, and he came back home, uh, and, and he went through a lot of the experience the young folks are coming back now, too. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of people forget, you know, what our veterans do for us in, in the world today. Uh, but, again, I, I'm so happy about today's uh, current uh, response to the veterans, and a lot of people out there are working for them and so forth. Absolutely, and, and trying absolutely. Trying to keep it together. But as we were driving, uh, you know, and Dan, I, I, I think Dan <laughs> was really a hip guy, man. I can remember when we were driving, and it was about 65 uh, and I like to drive. I, we drove all over Florida and all over Southeastern United. Because Dad was in the radio and television. Besides being a lawyer, was highly uh, talented and skilled. But uh, I can remember when "Light My Fire" came on by the Doors, mm. and he was digging it. Every, I mean, I was down there. <laughs> Dad loved that. Dad loved the Doors, man. I mean, tell you, I mean, he was so hip to the, the new music that was coming. Besides the British Invasion, and that, and yeah. of course, I was listening to that exclusively. You know, as soon as it hit tw- 64, 65. And then, of course, the Doors were trying to be the American counterpart to the British Americans because we got into the national spirit and right, so forth. Right. And, and the Beach Boys had been blown away, you know, by the Beatles and so forth. And uh, so the Doors came on the scene, and uh, you know, that was a real. I, I still remember. I can re, I can remember right, and I, I I don't I don't think I was much more than fifteen or sixteen, and I, you know maybe fourteen. I don't. But I can still remember Dad digging that song and that with with the full uh, you know organ play on that you know yeah Manzurk's that's uh, play, I know that's long, that, you're my talking fire. about that yeah that man, was that's like some what was that uh, fifteen that was one well, of the was six or seven minutes that was, was one of the oh, most yeah. unheard in those days yeah. that was it was always the three minute wonder you know and uh, it was yeah. just amazing that uh, you've got a, a, an individual that's thirty years older that really digs in, in that and, and so music yeah. does cross all about uh, all age it groups does. and that you absolutely know? absolutely I'm just kind of wondering now that we're we're sitting here talking about like our dads and like what was like you were talking about like your first you know taste of remembering like you know the the rock and roll and stuff like that i kind of am looking around this room and i'm wondering the same thing about all these guys that i play music with you know what i mean like what was what was my, what was the first thing that like my dad was a professional uh, musician in the, in the 30s oh yeah he played his last gig i think like in 1934 uh what was it that kind of like lit you up man i, I just I, I wonder about that what my me yeah uh Dion was the first. The first was the first yeah, one. Yeah, three Beatles. Okay, what about you, Kevin? I'm wondering. Well, my sisters were a lot older than I was, so my sisters kind of turned me on to music, and they got me into like um, a lot of the horn bands: Chicago, Blood, Sweat, and Tears, uh, Pacific Gas and Electric, Steppenwolf, stuff like that. Was what they turned me on to. That's why you were bass player. Yeah. <laughs> he wants the funk, man. That's it. Born to be wild, baby. Yeah, 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 yeah. My first concert, man, I was 10 years old. Went and saw Steppenwolf by myself. Nice. Oh, wow. Nice. Yeah. That's awesome. All the now, David, David Lee, I know you're over there. You're being quiet. You're in the corner. And I don't think that, that our internet viewers can actually see you because you are underneath the camera. But what was the first thing that lit you up musically, man? They can hear me. I can't hear myself. I can't hear you either, man. I'm hoping that they can. I'd like to thank uh, my mom and dad Uh who both passed on for discouraging my music career. They they never really uh, would give me any encouragement or support for music. And so I I played my little rented drum set in the basement for three, four months. (laughs) My dad told me to get my hair cut. I came from the barber. He told me, go back and get it cut right. (laughs) <laughs> and, and that was my little walking papers, and it was from that point on that I began uh, really playing with other musicians, you know. And uh, what was it, the first thing that you heard that like really kind of? I don't know. Of course, seeing Elvis and uh, and all the Ed Sullivan shows, the Beatles and yeah. well, the great artists. Yeah. But I think even before that, I think it was falling in love with American music on AM radio when I was a kid in the fifties. I was born in forty nine. Uh, in the fifties, you could hear Little Richard on one cut. You'd hear Roger Miller doing some uh, novelty country song. Yeah. And, Dang and me. And then you'd hear the Shirelles or James Brown. It was such a beautiful mix. All on the same station. Yeah. Plus, that's and, wonderful, and man. That's, and that was it. Just a little bit of everything. For never 
encouraging because, <laughs> because I would have quit if it wasn't. I had a, yeah. you know, a, a mission, you yeah. know, to yeah. prove to them. So. You would have quit if it wasn't for mom and dad so discouraging you, man. <laughs> yeah. You said, "I'm out of here, folks." I gotta, I gotta ask Mike too over there, the professor. What was, what was the first thing that, that lit you up musically? Oh, uh, you. What do you mean? Uh, well, like, what was the first thing that you heard that, like, you know, you got real excited about well, and uh, made you want to play? Or uh, same thing, like with David. Like, uh, I, I just, uh, it's just music was just when I heard it, it's just very interested, interesting to me. It just kind of take me, it took me to another place rather than where I was. Kind of, it kind of took me someplace else. Just the lyrics and the music and everything, and um, you know, I, I. Uh, it's just everything. I, I was influenced by all kinds of music, like uh, basically country and everything that was on the radio. And at that time, like back in the 60s, they played everything. They'd play Johnny Cash and they'd turn around and play something by uh, Jan and Dean or, you know, it was, uh, you know. Yeah. So. And here we are on the rock and roll yeah. show, man. And you know what? Rock and roll all came from like the stuff that we're playing. You know what I mean? All the blues. Like I said, you know, my dad schooled me Muddy Waters okay. and all that. You know, that's these guys, they, they, man, they, they, the Rolling Stones and all those guys, they stole their licks and, and turned it into rock and roll, you know? So uh, that's, we're playing blues, but you know what? It's, it's, it's rock and roll and it's all the same stuff, man. So uh, thanks for having us here on the, on the show, you David. Know what, it's cool. Hey, uh, you know, uh, your band is so awesome. You know, the music <laughs> the music you've been sharing uh, is some of the best ever in the studio, I have to admit. Oh, there. thank you very much. And can you share can you share another one with us? I think we can do one more. Why don't we do that uh why don't we do that that since we're talking about the blues and we're talking about uh some kind of deep, heavy stuff here. Um, we're actually going to take it to another level. And we, uh, um, everybody in the room here, uh, we are all some church-going folks. Oh, we yeah. get up on Sunday mornings and we go praise the Lord. And uh, Brother Bob over here wrote us a, a gospel song in the Delta Blues tradition. And uh, so uh, we're going to go ahead and do that one for you right now. We actually just got back from uh, a trip to the Delta, um, Mike and Bob and myself uh, went up to the Delta to go work uh, with a wonderful uh, producer and songwriter up there, and uh, we'll be working on some material with him uh, at the Ground Zero Blues Club and uh, Vincent Productions um, for hopefully what will be album number two. All right, so, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and uh, let's go ahead and do this thing. Oh, 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 oh,
And about that time You waited with me on judgment day You know that was a fine love Oh yeah, I'll say yeah Say up with you. Yeah. And everybody yeah. said amen, right? Amen, there you go. amen, brother and sister. Amen. Yeah. Right. Wait for me on the judgment day. There you yeah. go. There you go. Hey, a lot of this music that we play, man, you know, like I, like I said, we went up to, uh, went down to the crossroads. We surely oh, yeah. did in Clarksdale, Mississippi. That's where the actual crossroads are. You know that about Robert Johnson, you know, where he made his deal with the devil, supposedly, as the folklore goes. And uh, learned a lot about this music that we're playing. I know I got educated up there. And uh, um, a lot of the stuff that, that we're doing actually comes from the gospel. So, uh, you know, that's that's where uh, Muddy Waters and all them. Oh, my gosh. Well, is somebody did, else calling? Didn't Cream do the Crossroads, too? Yeah. Cream did do. Yeah, Eric Clapton. Yeah, Eric they did Clapton, do a cover of the yeah, Crossroads. Ginger Baker. Who else is on the phone? Somebody else is on the phone, Nolan? Oh, yeah. Tampa Mike here. Tampa Mike! <laughs> <laughs> What's up? I uh, love you guys. Hey, I appreciate the show having you guys on. I uh, just want to share as a fan, uh, any chance somebody gets to go out and see them, uh, they got to do it. Uh, it's just uh, an incredible experience. Like Mike was talking about, their music will take you to places that uh, you've just never been, and you just kind of want to be there when they sing it. And I get to see a lot of other people, uh, you know, just get focused on the band and uh, love what they do. And, uh, it, it's just an incredible experience. Uh, shout out to your folks there in the studio. They sound great here across the internet. And, uh, awesome. Hopefully we can get uh, Mike and Kevin to peek in and, uh, and the drummer, too. Uh, we can't quite see them here on the, in the internet world. but uh, Oh, you can't yeah, see the guys? All... <laughs> <laughs> Le- lean over. Lean over. David, raise the stick Mike. up, man. Raise the stick up, man, so they can Tampa see you. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Love you guys. Awesome. Right, we love you, too, right. man. Thanks so much for calling, Tampa Mike. One of our, right. uh, thanks, honey. One of our uh, fans um, also uh, helps us out a whole lot with our audio visual needs, put some videos up for us on YouTube and uh, stuff like that. So a big shout out to the Lauren Mitchell Band AV department, otherwise known as right. Tampa Mike. <laughs> We're lucky, man. We've got you the best it. fans. You I got to tell all. you. You got and it you all know, covered. Anybody, anybody else, anybody else who's out there listening, any of our fans, um, I know the Gumbo Girls are all tuned in. So uh, I know you guys in uh, Georgia and Steve and you guys are listening and uh, I don't know if any of my family is listening back there in Ohio. I know dad was listening. Um, but uh, anybody else who happens to be a fan of ours, man, I got to tell you, we are uh, so lucky. We've got some of the best fans in the world. And if it wasn't for all y'all, we wouldn't be here doing this because uh, it's you who really make us what we are. You guys believe in us. And uh, every time you come out to see a show and we get to play for you, um, you know, you uh, help those clubs bring us back every time that you're there with us, you know, and uh, the energy that you give us while we're on stage uh, definitely helps helps us to work harder and to uh, be better and uh, play harder and work our butts off. And we love it. So thank you all so much for coming out to our shows. We love our fans. They're the best, man. Uh, Now, I don't want to put you on the spot, Lauren. Oh, boy. Do you have any dates that are uh, current in the next uh, few weeks? Oh, my goodness, that are coming up. Um, Uh, Man, what do we got going on? I know. Anybody um, got any dates here, shows? We're up here. And actually, can you pull up my website? And then I can tell you. It's it's laurenmitchellband.com for anybody who doesn't know us that uh, is listening. That's L-A-U-R-E-N. 
M I T C H E L L band, as in all these people that I got here in the room with me, dot com. <laughs> and uh, our whole schedule is listed there. And um, I know we're up here north of the Skyway um, on October 11th. I can tell you we are going to be at the Ringside Cafe up here in St. Pete. Um, definitely a legendary place for the blues. So please come out and see us uh, there. And um, I know also on uh, October 7th, I can tell you um, about a uh, benefit that's going on in Bradenton, Florida called Lady Sings the Blues. Um, myself, along with this wonderful band, uh, is going to be the house band there this evening. Excuse that evening, and uh, um, there's going to be, uh, I think we've got 14 women that um, all over from the Tampa Bay area, Bradenton, Sarasota, Venice uh, area that are going to be singing blues songs in support of um, a local charity, actually, that my dad started, uh, full disclosure. <laughs> called Here you go, Lauren. Elks. Oh, right. thank you, man. Elks you want, you Feeding want... Empty Little Tummies. There it is. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, we're, we're going to be out promo. there helping. We're going to be out there helping uh, the Elks Club uh, uh, put uh, food on uh, tables for homeless school children in Man- Manatee County. Um, there are over 2,000 children in Manatee County alone that go hungry every weekend when they leave. There's the school property um, from Friday afternoon until Monday afternoon because they're on free lunches at school. So if you guys can come out, the Bradenton Elks Lodge, I believe it's uh, 1511 1511 um, October 7th. We're going to be playing a benefit there. So if you guys want to hear us along with a whole bunch of other lovely ladies, Twinkle's going to be there, our friend Twinkle. Um, Cara Nally, there's a whole bunch of other girls coming up to play, and uh, this band's going to be there too, and we are trying to help feed those hungry kids. Um, we're also going to be at the first Friday in Lakewood Ranch. That'll be our next show. That is uh, Friday, October 5th. We got all kinds of stuff coming up, so uh, go to the website, www.laurenmitchellband.com. Check us out, and we're on Facebook too, so Facebook uh, slash Lauren Mitchell Band. And you can find us there and like us. We'll like you too. You know it, man. <laughs> you know it. That's what it's all about here. You know, promoting our artists in the area and uh, thank you. Crossing the boundaries of all styles here and, and just getting to be uh, with the mix, which with the sound mix that enhances what we're trying to do in our art form that we can connect with a lot of people so that Amen. people can have a good time and make it a little bit better place. Now, uh, Lauren, I'm mean, we got a, we're getting short on time here. Right. Anybody have any last words? No, not really. Last just... word. Come on, man. Let's figure what you got, Kevin? All what right. you got? I love you, Sandy. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Love connection. Beautiful. Thank you for Two being one, here, Sandy. Though. This You're is David awesome. J. Rocks the J Show with the Lauren Mitchell Band. Yeah. Beautiful blues band. That, I'll tell you what that was. That was another fun show from rockslamradio.com. Yeah.